Across the plains of Central and Western North America, there exists one of the most unique animals on the continent. The pronghorn antelope is hands down the most athletic animal on the prairie. Able to reach speeds of up to 55 miles an hour, they are counted among some of the fastest animals on the planet. In fact, the pronghorn antelope seems almost over-engineered for speed, to a ridiculous extent. This is an animal that can easily outrun every predator on the landscape. Most prey animals that evolve for fast running normally do so through a process of natural selection where only the fastest individuals are able to pass on their genes to the next generation because they're the only ones that survive long enough to reach adulthood. In North America today, the major large land predators are wolves, bears, and pumas or mountain lions. None of these animals can even come close to how fast the pronghorn can run. Wolves can occasionally take down a pronghorn if by only using pack strategies to do so. And this is a subject that I've actually been asked quite a bit over the years, and I think it would make a really good video topic, because the actual catalyst that led to this animal being as fast as it is, is believed to have been an animal that no longer exists today. And it actually has to do with an animal that not very many people know about that used to live here in North America. So let's get into it and ask the question, why is the pronghorn antelope so fast? So as I've stated in previous videos, North America during the Pleistocene was teeming with all sorts of animals. But the thing is, most of these animals were actually bigger and bulkier than a lot of the animals that we see today. They definitely weren't built for speed. As I said in my Smilodon video, those cats were built more like bears than actual cats. This is because despite North America having about as much diversity of biomes as Africa today, it was still quite a bit cooler than Africa. Normally in colder climates, the mammals tend to have larger body mass in order to maintain a higher body temperature. So for decades, scientists were left kind of in the dark wondering why this animal had evolved such speed that would allow it to easily outrun any of the predators of the modern day or the Pleistocene. We know that pronghorns were around during that time, and in fact there was more species of pronghorn than there are today. It almost seemed like there was a missing piece to the puzzle. And then, in 1969, the skeleton of an unknown species of cat was discovered in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. The site was dated to the Pleistocene, and the cat was unlike any alive today, or any other that we were familiar with in the Americas. It had long legs, a large rib cage, and a large nasal opening on its short muzzle. It had all the features of a fast-running pursuit predator. In fact, the more the scientists looked at it, the more that it started to look like another animal from the other side of the world. The African cheetah is hands down the fastest land animal on Earth. The fastest reliably recorded speed was 61 miles an hour, but some estimates have even pushed it all the way up to 80 miles an hour for a top speed. And this animal is literally built for nothing else. It's lightly built at around 150 pounds. It has long legs and a long tail, a surprisingly large chest cavity for an animal of its size, with a massive heart and lungs for pumping air and blood around the body, a large nasal opening on its snout to allow for collecting more oxygen, and its feet are even specially adapted compared to other cats. If anything, their claws are more similar to canine claws than feline claws. They don't retract and dig into the ground like cleats to improve traction when running. They've become so well adapted for running that they tend to struggle in other areas. They're more specialized than most others, mostly preying on smaller antelope like Impala, Springbok, and Thompson's Gazelle. They've been known to occasionally go after a wildebeest, but they normally won't go much bigger than that, because they can't. They lack the power to actually take down large prey. And they've become so specialized for hunting these animals that it's pushed these antelope to become some of the fastest herbivores on the planet. This process is called an evolutionary arms race. When competition or predation from another species pushes an animal's evolution in a certain direction. Basically, animals like the Thompson's gazelle were bound to become faster because, well, the slower ones weren't surviving to adulthood. Thus, the better runners were the ones who were passing their genes on to the next generation, and, well, 
the cycle continues. And just the same, a slower cheetah would probably struggle to catch its prey and would likely starve shortly after leaving its mother. So from both sides, these animals have pushed each other to the absolute limits and made them become hyper-specialized. And when those fossils were found of that mystery cat in Wyoming, it started to paint a picture that something very similar might have been happening in North America during the Ice Age. I've oftentimes compared Pleistocene North America to modern day Africa in terms of its biodiversity. And a lot of the Ice Age megafauna have modern equivalents in Africa that makes that ecosystem one of the best comparisons to what the landscape might have been like during that time. It was originally theorized that this mystery cat was actually a close relative of the cheetah. And it was given the name Myrosinonyx, or the American cheetah. However, it's now believed that this animal is not a close relative of modern cheetahs. It's still a cat, but it's probably closer related to things like pumas and mountain lions, possibly diverging from that lineage of cats around 2.6 million years ago. Weighing around 200 pounds, Myrosinonyx was likely not quite as fast as the African cheetah, but then again, it didn't have to be. Despite Africa being a good comparison to Pleistocene North America, there was still a lot of differences. The climate was generally cooler, and for that reason, North American animals tended to be larger than animals in the tropics. Now, the American cheetah was still larger than the African cheetah, but it was still small by comparison to things like the American lion, the short-faced bear, the dire wolf, and saber-toothed cats like Smilodon, and it likely probably would have had many of the same issues that African cheetahs have today dealing with their other native predators. African cheetahs have a major issue losing kills to other predators like lions and hyenas. Because they're so lightly built, they struggle to be able to defend themselves against some of the larger, more powerful predators. And they would also have struggled to take down some of the larger prey animals as well. So it's likely that this cat evolved specifically to chase after the smaller and faster animals like pronghorn antelope, thus triggering the same evolutionary arms race that existed in Africa between the antelope and cheetah of that continent. So what happened to the American cheetah? Obviously, their prey didn't disappear because pronghorn still exists today. It's often been said that because of how specialized animals like this are, if, say, impalas and other fast-moving small-bodied antelope disappeared in Africa, that would probably spell the end for the African cheetah. But obviously, this wasn't the case. And to be honest, we really don't know what exactly caused the extinction of the American cheetah. This is because since the discovery of the holotype specimen in 1969, there's only been a handful of other Myrosinonyx fossils ever found, and most of them are pretty fragmentary. No complete skeleton's ever been found, and so it's really unsure. It is possible that they just had a hard time competing with some of the smaller, faster predators that started to become more prevalent after the end of the Ice Age when much of the larger bodied animals started to die out, but most of those predators were also around during the Pleistocene, so they would still have posed competition for the American cheetah when it was alive. So that's kind of a mystery that we still don't really have the answers to. But what we do know is the pronghorn has continued to maintain its title as the fastest land animal in North America. I mean, at this point, it's really just a benefit that puts it head and shoulders above every other animal that it could compete with. There's nothing driving its evolution into becoming slower, so there's really no reason for it to. So the pronghorn antelope pretty much exists as a super specialized animal left over from another time. Constantly on the lookout for that age-old rival that will never come for it again. Myrosinonyx is an incredibly fascinating animal to me. It's one of those relatively unknown, obscure creatures that, if you haven't been able to tell by now, I like putting a spotlight on. And it seems like all of you have really started to like what I've been doing as well. Because over the past couple of weeks, my channel has started to grow faster than I could have ever imagined. I can't tell you how much being able to share this passion that I have with so many like-minded people absolutely makes my day every day that I get to get up and work on content for this channel. Over the month of April, I've actually managed to break into being able to be eligible for monetization. But I'm still a long way off from being able to do this full time. So now more than ever, if you all enjoy this content and you would like to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. The larger this community becomes, the more content I'll be able to make for everyone. 
In the next couple of months, there's going to be a lot of changes on this channel. So if you want to join me on this journey, like and share my video and subscribe for more. I can't thank everyone enough for this opportunity. All right, have a good one, everybody.